Australian doctors here are hesitant to prescribe antibiotic courses for UTIs that exceed the typical courses of three to five days on average. What would you say to those who are concerned about prescribing long-term antibiotics? Well, I, I mean, the answer is that we, that, that we can reassure them with safety data. And this year we've got a, we've got, got a set of papers that we're pushing out that should start to reassure people. I can say that a, a more important pressing motivation for this is that you can see that the, the history of this developing, that the guidelines came in about 1999, the first guidelines, and then many other followed on. And then the anxieties about antimicrobial resistance arose. And of course, the authorities said, oh, we've got to do something that, you know, there's this disaster coming up. We're not going to be able to treat people. So they introduced these rules and regulations that, that, that it stipulated that you've got to use um, short courses of antibiotic to treat urine infection. Now, why urine infection? Because it's it's the most common reason for using antibiotics. Now, no one had accumulated any evidence at all to say whether that was the right thing or not. But there's nothing eccentric about that. The, the guidelines that are issued are based on, on uh, don't have any, uh, most of the time haven't got evidence. And the other thing is they haven't read the evidence that they're quoting properly so that they understand it. So because of the anxiety, really various penalties got introduced so that the practices would be inspected and um, the, 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 the inspecting or regulatory authorities would, would look at scrutinise their uh, patterns of antibiotic prescribing. And if they didn't fit with what was expected, then, then, then they were penalised. So that, that engendered a considerable fear in, in people in order to uh, over how you treat and how you don't treat. And so this all these different factors came together until the, 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 the old fashioned correct way of treating urinary infection was built into some kind of pariah. And it also hung on the fact that the, the, the belief that if you do a urine culture and you culture a, a bug, that is the cause of the infection. Well, it's simply un, un, untenable that, that the, the problem of causation in urinary tract infection has not been properly addressed. So I keep on saying, we don't know cause. We have no idea. So when they come to me with their, their microgen tests and their special cultures here and so on and so forth, I keep having to say, you haven't a clue whether that is causing the infection. But of course, that they're doing antibiotic resistance studies on all these bugs. Um, and, and that again is flaming the, the, the fear of, of, of doing harm. We, we're also publishing a paper, it's gone, the abstract's gone up to the conference anyway, that demonstrates how the impact of the guidelines from about 2000 and Two, has resulted in all over the world an alarming rise in the incidence of interstitial cystitis, chronic pain syndrome and undiagnosed cystitis. And the, the, the thesis that we're putting forward is that the short courses are not working enough and we're sure of that because the randomised control trials will show that they won't in about a third to 25 percent of patients. And that if you if you decide that someone hasn't got a urine infection because of a culture is negative and therefore you diagnose it with interstitial cystitis, then you're going to see this rise in the interstitial cystitis. I mean, the, the other point about it is to say, take someone with all the symptoms and the right signs and you do a urine culture and then that culture is negative and you say you haven't got a urine infection that is it that is a calamitous scientific blunder it's 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 really quite a, an egregious error because it's called um, a base rate error and what you're doing is ignoring the evidence before you did the test and removing it from consideration of the disease. It's a crashing error, but that's got ingrained like um, 
like like it's got ingrained into our guidelines and everything um it is it, tattooed into it it's very difficult to dig it out so in the short answer to that is we, 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 we're pumping out studies to try and alert people to what's going on. But I, I mean, I'm still up against it. It's, it's a, the, the thing is that there's a terribly strict rule in our unit. Unless you're going to talk from the empirical science, you're going to shut your mouth. All right. So that if you go through history, you're not going to find that we ever made any statement of opinion or, or a presumed fact without reference to empirical scientific evidence.